Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Have you ever wondered what those little rings are that some men wear that have either symbols, initials, or a little crest on them? Those are signet rings, and in today's video, we discuss them, we talk about the history, where you can find them, the details, the do's, as well as the don'ts. <laughs> Signet ring was the quintessential gentleman's ring, and it had great importance in terms of society, culture, but even in business and politics. Today, the signet ring has lost quite a bit of its luster, and sometimes it's handed down as a family heirloom. However, at the end of the day, it's a really interesting concept, and it can be a stylish accessory. So first, let's talk about the history of signet rings. Traditionally, the ring was used as a seal and it featured either a heraldic symbol, a family crest, or even a coat of arms. It was in fact used around the world and it became a symbol of authenticity and somewhat like a signature. In combination with wax, it also served as a seal, for example, for letters or documents. A signet ring itself had specific markings that identified it belonging to a specific person or to a family. Interestingly, signet rings can be traced back as far as 3500 BC and specifically to Mesopotamia where they were used as a means of authenticity. Signet rings were even mentioned in the Bible in the Old Testament, in Daniel's in the lion's den. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. By medieval times, almost every person of nobility had a signet ring. For many centuries, a signet ring was destroyed when the owner died because it didn't have much inherent value and it was just a tradition. If you look at the word signet, it means as much as a small seal for formal or official purposes. A signet ring was definitely not something that every man wore. It was more reserved for the elite or people of a certain class and societal status. While the first signet rings had a raised pattern on the ring, subsequently that changed into engraved signet rings because they were used in a wax seal. This tradition holds true today, and even though most people don't use a signet ring today anymore to use it in a wax seal, you'll find crests that are reversed so they could actually be used with traditional wax. Interestingly, some men would not wear them on their fingers, but much rather add them as a fob to their watch chain. The most common style of signet rings were either initials or monograms, and people with a family crest or a coat of arms would choose that. While initially most rings were made out of solid metal, later on it changed and stones were incorporated into signet rings. So what about signet rings today? Are they a historic artifact or in fact something you can wear today? In Europe, you can still find families that pass in their rings or have new ones created for their children upon graduation or other important life events, though that is definitely the exception to the rule. Most families simply don't have a crest or coat of arms. You'll definitely find signet rings in the military and some men wear them showing their rank on their ring. You can also find them in fraternities or simply as a symbol as a belonging of a club. One of the more well-known organizations that employs signet rings are the Freemasons. Today, I've yet to find someone who actually uses their signet ring to make a seal with wax, and they're usually just meant to be a mark of authenticity and tradition. That being said, it's very easy to buy vintage rings on eBay these days. There are even counterfeits out there of vintage rings, or you can also have made your new ring. So if you like the design or the concept of a signet ring, but your family doesn't have a coat of arms, should you get one? Legally, the answer is clear. Anyone can go out and create a ring with their own coat of arms. And some people who are traditionalists may argue that it is more the sign of an imposter because you pretend to be part of the ability or of a class in society that you are in fact not. What is true that certain families have had coat of arms and family crests for generations, they all started at one point in time. 
And just because your family didn't have one and you really want one in your family, I think it's legitimate to simply start a new tradition. Of course, the design is entirely up to you, but traditionally heraldic symbols had a certain system behind them. So if you create a new symbol, maybe you just create your own, maybe you use animal symbols or something that speaks to you and your family. If money is of no object to you, you can consult with goldsmiths specialized in signet rings that know a lot about the history and what used to be done. And they also have the skill to carve pretty much anything you want into your ring. Personally, my family never had a crest. I never felt the need to create a signet ring with something that was so personalized and old fashioned. I really like to wear rings and I even have a bunch of rings in my collection that are made to be signet rings that could be engraved, but even a simple monogram is not something I felt that I need. So I simply skipped that and wore the regular rings. They look like a signet ring, but in fact, they lack the seal. At the end of the day, it's entirely up to you if you want your monogram or something else in there. But at the end of the day, I think it's a cool piece. It's a unique piece of jewelry. And as a man, besides your wedding band and maybe your collar pin or a tie pin or your cufflinks, there's not a whole lot of jewelry you can wear. That being said, if you're interested in rings, stay tuned for a guide on pinky rings, which are of course worn on your little finger or on your pinky finger. So once you've decided a signet ring is right for you, what finger should you wear it on? In Germany, some people wear it on their ring finger, and I've also seen that in the US. In Britain, traditionally, the signet ring is worn on the pinky finger of the left hand. Traditionally, during Victorian times, men would wear their pinky ring and their wedding band stashed together on the left pinky finger. For example, here you can see Prince Leopold, the son of Queen Victoria in the 1870s, wearing both rings in that fashion. Also in the US, the young FDR wore exactly that same combination and he had inherited the signet ring from his father. If you look at Prince Charles, he's wearing a gold heirloom signet ring stashed together with his wedding band on the pinky finger of his left hand. Or others like Winston Churchill wore their signet ring on the ring finger of the right hand. So as you can see, there is no clear rule, rhyme or reason. In Britain, there's a clear preference for the pinky finger of the left hand, but ultimately it's entirely up to you. For example, I wear my wedding band on the left ring finger, which is right next to the pinky finger. So having another signet ring next to it or any other ring, in my opinion, just looks weird. Because of that, I wear my rings either on the ring finger or on the pinky finger of my right hand. Ultimately, there's no right or wrong and you just have to decide what works for you and what look you like. So obviously, there are all kinds of gaudy men's rings out there, but a signet ring is traditionally a little more limited and classic. So what are the options you have? Most rings come in our 10 karat, 14 karat or 18 karat gold, either white gold or rose gold or yellow gold. You can also go with sterling silver, which is a lot less expensive, but also with things like palladium, which are more expensive. Most rings come with a flat stone on top that is usually set and that can be engraved. If you don't like a stone, you can also go with simple metal that is just fine. The bands are usually all solid and not decorated, but you can also find signet rings with heavy decoration on them. Traditional shapes include round, oval or long oval or rectangular, so square with rounded edges or even like cut edges that gives you an octagonal look. There really is no limit under the sun as long as the stone is flat and not domed. In terms of color and stones, the most popular are black onyx, blue lapis lazuli, a bloodstone, which is a dark green with red inclusions. You can also find a carnelian, which is dark red. And we use those stones also for our cufflinks, which you can find in our shop here, which go quite well if you want to coordinate them. In recent years, technological advances have allowed for laser engraved signet rings, sometimes also with enamel. Personally, I think it looks cheaper, it's less traditional, and if you opt for a signet ring, you obviously like the tradition and the historic look. For the same reason, I'd stay clear of showy diamonds because it's just too loud and it's not really part of a traditional signet ring. For a crest, you should decide if you want it raised or engraved. When it comes to engraving, there are different options. You can either have it engraved at all the same depth or at a more three-dimensional engraving, which takes more time. It looks much nicer, but it's also more expensive. Another little detail in rings is where the 
bottom part of the stone is open or closed. By default, most rings are open, so you can see the stone from the bottom. The problem with that is that it just collects dirt over time and it's very difficult to clean. So you have the option to close that off with metal, but since it uses more material, it's also more expensive. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel, hit that little bell to make sure you're always notified of new videos. Today's outfit consists of a three-piece suit in kind of a charcoal brown with a fine red stripe and combining it with a Winchester shirt with white collars and cuffs. I'm wearing them with gold cufflinks from Fort Belvedere, which you can find in our shop here. The shirt is a light green and I'm pairing it with a dark green and off-white houndstooth pattern in a burette silk, which is a more textured silk and it's more interesting and quite matte. Again, you can find it in our shop, just like the white pocket square I'm wearing here. It is a three-piece suit with peak lapels and a one closing button, as well as side vents. I'm combining it with a double-breasted vest, and so I always wear the jacket open. The pants have double inward pleats, and my shoes are brown, and to tie it all together, I'm wearing brown and green shadow-striped socks from Fort Belvedere, which pick up the green tones in the top part of my outfit and tie everything well together. The ring I'm wearing is actually a pinky ring on the right hand. Again, I'm not a signet ring wearer, and this one is domed. I think it's a tourmaline stone, is yellow gold, and it has a very nice finish to the surface.